Thank you all so much for that warm welcome. It's truly, truly an honor to be here um, with my fellow sisters. And before I get into my Sigma Kappa journey, which I'm very excited to share with all of you, I wanted to first get into my year as Miss America and kind of my journey to this path and, and how I got here. And a lot, oftentimes, a lot of people don't necessarily understand what the Miss America organization is. And there's four pillars to the Miss America organization. And as mentioned, the first and most important, I think, is really scholarship. And I started competing for scholarship money. And through this organization, I started in the teen program, was first runner up at Miss America's Outstanding Teen, which is the little sister organization to Miss America and is meant to be a feeder into the Miss America system. And so through that organization, won $25,000 in scholarship money and graduated debt free. But in addition to that, I took about a five year hiatus from the organization, really wanted to focus on my degree and I uh, started competing again because I found myself in a place where I knew I wanted to attend graduate school. Uh, my parents were totally out of cash, so I couldn't hit them up, and um, knew that I had to find a way to pay for this myself, aside from student loans, which I did not want to walk out of graduate school, hundreds and thousands of dollars in debt. So I competed for Miss New York twice, um, and through this entire organization, through all my years competing, um, I've won a little over $92,000 in scholarship money, and I have about about 62,000 of that left to put towards my graduate degree. So it really is an incredible program for young women to have a voice, pay for their education, and, sp and learn really speaking abilities and lifelong skills. The next pillar of the organization is service. And this is very much a year of service because I will always say everyone wants to win Miss America, not everyone wants the job of Miss America. And those are two very separate things. So this year I have the wonderful opportunity to serve as a National Goodwill Ambassador for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, um, an incredible organization that treats any child regardless of their disease, illness, whatever they're going through, no child can be turned away from a CMNH hospital. In addition to that, I work very closely uh, promoting STEM education. The Miss America organization has been promoting STEM for three years now, and I'm proud to be the first Miss America to actually have a degree in that field, which has really allowed us to launch our platform even more so than we have been able to in the past. Um, and of course, I also promote my own platform, which is celebrating diversity through cultural competency, which I'll touch on a little bit later. The next pillar is style, which kind of goes without say, um, and, and to encompass all the others is success. And so those are really what the Miss America organization stands for. But my journey to Miss America was a little bit different. Um, as I mentioned, I competed for Miss New York twice. Uh, the first year, I was second runner-up to Mallory Hagan, who won Miss New York that year. And if any of you follow the Miss America competition, Mallory went on to win the title of Miss America representing the state of New York last year. And I remember watching, you know, I watch Miss America every year, and I remember watching when Mallory was competing, and when she won, the night she won, I was so emotional and hysterical for so many reasons. And of course, you're proud when a fellow New Yorker wins and a sister that I'd competed with. But at the same time, it was kind of a turning point for me because I realized it was my moment that it was something that I had wanted so badly. And I felt that I had just missed it. And it was so within my reach. And so I remember calling my mom that night, hysterical, saying, Mom, I will never win Miss America now. What are the chances that Miss New York will win two years in a row? And for all you moms out there, <laughs> she said to me, well, Nina, why don't you first focus on winning Miss New York, and then <laughs> we can talk about Miss America. <laughs> So I remember sitting down with my sister a couple couple months after that when I was deciding to compete again for Miss Syracuse. Every contestant actually has to enter a local competition before she can even qualify for the state. So being from Syracuse, New York, I competed for Miss Syracuse. And I remember sitting down with my sister. Her name is Mina. My parents thought it was cute to have rhyming names, Mina and Nina. <laughs> Gets very confusing in my household. But she's also a fellow Sigma Kappa, which I'm very proud of. Yes, yeah, she is. It's so cute. <laughs> But I remember sitting down with her and, um, and, and she asked me, Nina, why are you investing so much time into this organization? What are you really getting out of it? And I said to her, Mina, I sincerely believe that three to five years from now, Miss America will be someone who's ethnic. And that's not to pull the race card. That's not to say, pick me, I'm brown by any means. I just, you can laugh, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> 
I just felt it was so timely for this organization to finally reach out to a new demographic of young women. Because I grew up watching Miss America on television, feeling like I could never have this job or never attain this title because I didn't look a certain way. I didn't fit that stereotype of what people thought Miss America should be, of that blonde hair, blue-eyed girl. And for me, it wasn't about me winning. It was about me being able to reach out to that young girl who I knew was watching Miss America the night I won, and for her to finally say, wow, this year Miss America looks like me. And I don't have to have a normal talent to be in this role. And if you follow the competition, uh, the night I won, Miss America, which is, it's such a blur when you have that kind of night like that, when you dream of something for so long and for it to actually happen is very difficult to put into words. But the night I won, I was immediately whisked off to a press conference. And the first question that I was asked at that press conference is, well, there's a lot of negative, you know, tweets on Twitter and this and that, and just a lot of racist remarks that I even had no idea what, what it was. But kind of going off of that, the after I won, there were a lot of ignorant remarks on Twitter and social media because it's so easy to hide behind a Twitter handle. That being said, you should all follow me <laughs> at Nina Tavori. Um, and, you know, I had people flat out call me a terrorist. I had people post pictures of themselves on Instagram in a headscarf that I felt was targeted towards me, which is a completely different misconception in itself. And one of the things that I was able to do as Miss America really was address this issue on national news networks because my platform isn't something that I just decided to promote when I woke up as Miss America. It's something that I've been promoting essentially my entire life officially for three years now. So this is something that is very close to my heart. And so I was really able to educate people and spark a global conversation about my platform and, and address these ignorant remarks. And I think what I was so proud of really is that for every one negative comment, tweet, or post, I received hundreds, if not thousands, of words of positive remarks and encouragement and support from not only Americans, but people all across the world. And to have everyone come together and champion in this cause um, has been really incredible for my year. And when I, when I speak about my platform, I like to give a little background as to why I chose it. And, you know, for me, I kind of always grew up with a lot of stereotypes. I was born in Syracuse, New York, but my family moved to Oklahoma when I was four, a very small, predominantly white, conservative town in Oklahoma. And uh, I was often mistaken for Native American. People would always ask me what tribe I was in. <laughs> and I would say, I don't know. Um, <laughs> But, you know, I also had a lot of common questions even when I moved to Michigan when I was 10 in terms of, you know, my culture and heritage. People would always ask me if I was going to have an arranged marriage or what the red dot means or do you worship cows? And the list goes on and on and many of these remarks weren't necessarily meant to be malicious but really simply due to the fact of ignorance. And this year I've been able to launch my social media campaign Circles of Unity nationally. And the way that actually started was at the University of Michigan and I was able to do an entire diversity day at a local elementary school in Ann Arbor. And I brought together all college, um, all the groups, uh, I suppose multicultural organizations on the college campus to come together to put on this diversity day and each classroom was a different con country and children rotated between those classrooms and learned something very specific to that country whether it be trying something simple as trying the food or learning a different language or a dance or instrument something that they were really engaged with hands-on activities um, so children were actually you know having being able to touch and feel things opposed to just sitting in a lecture and learning about it and that's something Something I'm really proud of that I was able to do not only within the Greek community and my Sigma Kappa sisters um, at University of Michigan but also all the multicultural organizations coming together to do that. And what we did in addition to that was paint a unity tile. And all the children painted a tile that they thought, you know, something that was representative of themselves. And we placed these tiles around the community. And people who found these tiles, we asked to take a picture of the title and kind of tweet us what they thought unity meant to them or what this tile represented. And unfortunately, I, you know, cannot go around the U.S. painting tiles. Um, but I've turned that into a social media campaign where I've asked everyone to kind of tweet me their thoughts, videos, or pictures of what it means to be culturally aware and hashtag circles of unity. So that's been something really nice ongoing throughout my year that I will continue to work with as well afterwards. 
Um, in addition to my platform work that I've done previous to this, this year I've been honored to be able to speak to roughly 25 different colleges and universities, which I think is our core demographic, especially for the Miss America organization, but also work with incredible um, organizations such as Clinton Global Initiative. I was a panelist there, Education Nation, um, specifically promoting diversity within classrooms. I've also worked with countless congressmen, governors, um, senators, and lobbied on Capitol Hill for this cause, um, and even met with, with President Obama himself, which was truly an honor. Um, and and it's, uh, it's very interesting, I suppose, because so many of the of the skills that I have used for this year, I've definitely learned um, as a sister in Sigma Kappa, and I truly, truly mean that.